Chapter 1. Anyone can change their life for the better if they are ready to do the work. Russell Brand realized that he had become addicted to many things. Alcohol, food, eBay, and even coffee. When he finally sought help, he discovered a 12-step routine that guarantees recovery from addictions. This summary focuses on those 12 steps. Change requires work, and it can be painful to execute because you have to sacrifice many habits that you are used to. But the results are always life-changing. If you keep postponing your recovery, you'll never get anything done. Addiction happens when natural biological needs are prioritized to the point of destructiveness. The 12-step program is effective because it understands that the instinct that drives humans' compulsiveness is universal. So keep reading if you want to change your life and overcome your addictions. Being human is a me-too business. We are all in the mud together. My qualification is that I am more addicted, more narcissistic, more driven by lust and the need for power and recognition. Russell Brand Chapter 2 The best way to begin your recovery is to admit the truths about your addiction. The first step in the 12-step process is to admit that you're powerless over your addiction. It is an invitation to change. Most people find this difficult because part of us wants to change a negative while the part wants to hold on to it. Recovery is a journey from a lack of awareness to awareness. Russell Brand was a standard drug addict and alcoholic. He thought it was dumb. Later, he was introduced to the 12 steps by a seriously committed atheist. This was because he became desperate and broken. Below is a clinical breakdown of the cycle of addiction. If this model reflects the life you want to change, it's likely that the 12-step model will too. Pain. Using an addictive agent like alcohol, food, sex, work, dependent relationships to soothe and distract. Temporary distraction. Consequences. Shame and guilt leading to pain or low self-esteem. If you have an addiction, this is the cycle it follows. You know there's a likelihood that you have an addiction problem if there's an activity that impairs your performance and ability to enjoy life. If you are unsure of what is wrong, take the time to sit in a quiet place and practice your breathing. Take deep breaths and examine how you feel. Are you sad or anxious? Then you need to ask yourself if you are happy. In the stillness and calm breathing, you'll be able to answer the question. Ask yourself what you want to change, the fear you associate with the change, and the costs and benefits of the change. The second step in the 12-step process is to believe in the ability of a greater power to restore your sanity. This step is about hope. You've just admitted you have a problem and that your life has become unmanageable. This admission will come as a blow to your ego. Your ego works with the substance you are addicted to. However, you need hope. Hope that you can change. Hope that there's another way. There will be lots of mistakes and setbacks. Change is hard, and that's why you can't do it alone. Take deep breaths and try to be kind to yourself. One day at a time, you can get over your addiction. You need a good deal of self-compassion, which is neither stagnant nor permissive. Power is the ability to affect change. On your own, you don't have enough power to change, so you need access to a power that exceeds that. Sometimes the greater power you need to believe in is the 12-step program. It can also be nature or a belief in God. Whatever it is, you need to understand that you are not alone in your journey. Did you know? The feeling of hopelessness is often the first thing revealed when the primary addictive behavior is challenged or arrested. Chapter 3. When many other options fail, God can be an enormous help. The decision to accept God is an acknowledgement of your failure through previous attempts to change your life. This is the third step in the 12-step process. Ask yourself if you are happy, sad, or feeling a low sense of self-worth. If the answer to these questions is yes, then you are stuck in a cycle. You should identify discomfort in these areas. Pride, what you think others should think about you. Self-esteem, what you think of yourself. Personal relations, how you interact with others. Ambitions, your dreams and goals. Security, what you need to survive. Finances, how much money you have and how it affects your feelings. Take the time to examine yourself based on those criteria and see how you score. You need to give up control to God and be ready to listen to whatever changes he wants you to make. In this step, you are conceding, hopefully, mentally, and spiritually, that you cannot do this on your own. For Brand, this step was the beginning of humility. To say, I need help, is not an easy thing for many people. Many prefer to manipulate people into meeting their needs or struggle along without them. Step 4 of the 12-step process involves making an inventory of every single thing in your life. Include all the details that you are ashamed of or scared to share with others for fear of judgment. Addiction is a lonely business in whatever form it's suffered. A paralyzing cycle of unseen, destructive, negative thinking, and dangerous behavior. This fourth step is for illumination. It has to be thorough and exhaustive, but it needn't be repetitive. By following this process, you take stock of all the beliefs and resentments that populate your conscious experience. By thoroughly taking inventory of yourself, you'll begin to see where your explicit beliefs meet with your unconscious beliefs. According to Russell Brand, his former belief that he needed to sleep with a lot of women when scrutinized could pose as culturally acceptable, cool, fun, aspirational, and harmless. Once thoroughly inventoried, this behavior was exposed as desperate, pitiful, toxic, and lonely. The behavior had been designed or adopted as a strategy to prevent pain. Most people can't be made to make a personal inventory. Everyone's analysis of themselves, their psyche, and its various attachments and consequences are subjective. That is why this process should be undertaken with the guidance and experience of a mentor. Ask yourself where you made a mistake, where you've been selfish, dishonest, afraid, and at fault. These questions should be asked for every addiction problem. They'll facilitate an honest conversation that'll propel your healing process forward. Chapter 4. Sharing your journey with trustworthy people can prevent you from making grave mistakes. 
The fifth step involves sharing the inventory you made in step four with at least one person, someone who will guide you on your journey. It is this confession that will help reconstruct your perspectives of these events. By admitting your wrongs to God and another human being, you'll rewrite your past, change your narrative, and reprogram yourself. At this stage, ask yourself if you were honest in your inventory. You also need to determine if you were clear about your motives for behaving in a certain way. Next, you should try to confirm that you are ready to take responsibility for your wrongs. There is power in recognizing your flaws and admitting the truth to yourself. Once you acknowledge your flaws, nobody can hold them against you because you are self-aware. Step 6 of the 12-step process is about healing. You have to believe that God will expunge all the character defects you have. As a rule, most character defects are the result of an unhealthy expression of and experience of many basic human needs. It's not as if those actions are bad in themselves. For example, alcohol and the person's sexuality are not wrong unless your experiences of those drives are not balanced or codependent. Your sixth step's prayers should not be make me sober or take away my sexual organs. Instead, you might pray, help me consume alcohol in a more healthy way or grant me a healthy expression of my sexuality. Having identified your defects through your inventory, you have a decision to make. Do you want to continue to operate within these patterns or to transcend them? For each defect that you identify, ask yourself why you did them and what you hope to achieve when you stop doing them. If you find that you are not ready to let go, ask yourself what the reason might be. The truth is that defective behaviors can seem like a good escape, but they only hide the real problems a person is experiencing. Chapter 5. The past might have been terrible, but God can remove all the shortcomings. The seventh step is about humility. It is about accepting the limits that surround your life at the moment. It is also about hope and embracing the future that is to come. It is almost impossible to achieve much if you constantly believe that you do not need any help. Humility might feel strange in the beginning, but it is a vital step in the healing process. Humility does not mean that you have no value. No, you are infinitely valuable since you are part of the infinite. Humility means that you can humbly request for help from God and man. You can say this prayer to surrender yourself to God and ask for help. My Creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I now pray that you remove every single defect of character that stands between me and my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. This prayer shows that you admit your weakness and are ready to surrender everything to God. If you do not believe in God or the first prayer is uncomfortable for you, you can say this. I don't know if there is a supreme being out there in the limitless cosmos. In fact, I don't think there is. I do know that my thinking is limited as it takes place within the context of my own knowledge, which is bounded on all sides by ignorance. I am open to the possibility that beneath my thoughts, my feelings, the invisible field that holds together my material being, are other forces that are likely beyond human comprehension and the dualistic models and space-slash-time framework through which we understand reality. Within this limitlessness, all is possible. I, as a limited entity, petition with my awakening, personal consciousness that which is beyond limits and contains within it all creativity, all joy, all beauty, and I ask that my life and consciousness can be used as a vessel for these positive powers. You must make a list of their names and the offenses. Don't think about what making amends is like or whether you are willing to make them during compilation. If you do that, it disrupts the process. If you envisage making amends while making a list, you would omit people from the list. It is an elegant piece of construction and you must abide by it. You must be ready to give and receive forgiveness as well. The eighth and ninth step of the 12-step process involves preparing to and sending apologies to everyone who has been affected by your mistakes. Restitution is part of this process and the key is change. Since you have acknowledged your faults, you need to move forward. But you can't make any progress if your past is filled with all the sadness you've caused others. For the eighth step, make a list of all the people you hurt and be sure that you want to make amends to them. You don't want to do this grudgingly or hesitantly. For your healing to be complete, your apology needs to be sincere. For the ninth step, you have to actually apologize to them and make amends. Come up with creative solutions and hold nothing back. Chapter 6. It's not enough to just follow a few steps. You need to maintain your recovery. The remaining steps are known as maintenance steps. These steps require a daily commitment. The tenth step involves taking personal inventory and admitting the times you are wrong. This step requires you to be fully aware of yourself and your goals. By taking inventory continuously, you prevent yourself from moving from conscious connection to unconscious disconnection. The key is to identify the areas you may struggle with, and then create an ideal that helps to counter that. If you are a hopeless codependent, you may need to have an idea that facilitates independence or self-sufficiency. This is why this program works. There's no doctrine. There's no guru. You are your teacher based on what you learn through admission, honesty, and confession. Whenever you do something wrong, acknowledge it and make a list. Also, share with someone who can help you get back to your goal. Another maintenance step, step 11, is to remain connected to God. Through prayer and meditation, you can ask God to help you on your journey. You can say a prayer any way you know how. Simply ask for what you desire and humbly surrender yourself to God. The final step of the 12-step process involves looking at life less selfishly and helping others. This summary has offered you many tips, and you should share them with others as well. Think of creative ways to give back to your community and just do them. Once you help others, you'll be able to build a community that shares amazing values and can keep you on track. Did you know, your previous perspective will reassert itself if you are inert and you do nothing. Conclusion 
The 12 recovery steps might seem like a lot, but if you follow them to the letter, you'll be well on your way to recovery. As you try your best, remember to be patient with yourself. Those bad habits were not formed in a day, and they won't disappear in one day either. Give yourself some time. If you feel that yearning and that you've never quite fitted in this world, then you should give yourself and this program a chance because the yearning itself is real. It's trying to lead you home. Russell Brand. The 12 Steps. Admit you're powerless over your addiction. Believe that a power greater than you can restore your sanity. Make a decision to turn your life over to God's care. Take a moral inventory of your life. Admit to God and a trustworthy human being the nature of things. Ask God to remove all defects of character. Ask God to take away all shortcomings. Make a list of all the people you've harmed and be willing to make amends. Make direct amends to the people you harmed. Continue to take personal inventory. Pray, meditate, and ask God for help. Help other addicts and people in your community. The 12-step program is not only for addicts, but for anyone waiting for something. Whether it is a job, a raise, a husband, or a wife, we are all waiting for that one thing that is keeping us from living our lives. You have only one life. Stop waiting and start living. Try this. Make a list of all your addictions and admit that you are powerless over them. After you do this, call a trusted friend and inform them of your decision to begin the 12-step recovery program. Say a prayer to your creator each day for strength.